them to have a better fucking approach uh, with respect to, to dealing with the Russia on the Ukraine stuff than anyone else. Moving on. Our main story tonight concerns school. It's the only setting in which a child dissecting a frog is not an immediate red flag. <laughs> we teach kids a lot in school, from reading to long division to how to play the fucking recorder for some reason, but <laughs> recently there has been a lot of concern over one particular thing that people worry that kids are learning. Critical race theory is being taught in our schools. Um, it, critical race theory is bunk. Critical race theory is a lie from the first word to the last, from start to finish. Racist critical race theory. Critical race theory. Critical race theory in the schools and the wokeness. Let me tell you right now, critical race theory is bigoted, it is a lie, and it is every bit as racist as the Klansmen in white sheets. I do not like that Ted Cruz man. <laughs> I do not like him shouting Klan. I do not like him in a room. I do not like him in Cancun. <laughs> I do not like him playing ball. I do not like his face at all. I wish he'd lose his cushy job. That man, Ted Cruz, is a fucking knob. But here's the thing. It is true. You have probably heard people yelling about critical race theory on TV for more than a year now, and people have been listening to that noise, especially judging by what's been... I know, I know. I dropped the fucking ball. I'm sorry. I didn't give a trigger warning. ...happening at school board meetings across the country. Dude, we cover this we cover this a lot my friend we cover this a lot today okay where i mean you probably know that already though okay go back to the vod the western i'm sorry values that brought forth christianity and the founding documents are being called evil and racist i'm not co-parenting with the government it is not your job to force these ideas onto my child. The narrative in this country is that we're all inherently racist, and I'm about sick of it. It's a Marxist ideology, and we all know it. All of these lessons have the intent to make our children feel disgust towards our nation. This country isn't even a, a, a racist. It's just so funny that, like, people are upset about learning, like, accurate American history. Because, like, they feel like what accurate American history does make our ancestors look pretty fucking gross, right? And instead of re-examining their relationship with how they learn their history and why they feel the way that they do, they're, like, lashing out at the messenger that is tasked with education. The messenger's sole purpose here is not to be... uh the messenger's sole purpose here is to, to adequately provide education for Americans. It's wild that you are upset. It's wild that you're upset at, uh, you know, schools teaching proper, proper history. Country, we elected Obama for two times. Wait, hold on. <laughs> hold on. America can't be racist because of Obama? I don't know if you remember the 2008 election, but things got pretty racist back then. People kept saying he was born in Kenya. By the way, this is why I literally have stated before that that the the um, the civil war should have ended with way, way, way more gruesome acts uh, perpetuated upon the. Uh, the Confederacy. Like, we should have raised the South straight up and then rebuilt it in a glorious, diverse... Okay, chill. Oh, no. No, 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 no. That's 100% true. It's 100% true. They should have fucking... App First of all, they should have killed way more slavers. I'm sorry if that's, like, you know, your your granddaddy or whatever, but... Straight up, they should have burned. They should have burned the South down, way harder, and they should have killed way more slavers. Okay, straight up, like they should have absolutely killed way more slavers. They should have tried them, and then killed them. Okay, 
And there should have been a complete shutdown on misinformation campaigns like the Daughters of the Confederacy, jail, immediately jail, no rehabilitation. I'm sorry, sometimes you gotta fucking, you know, you gotta, you, listen, if you're at the precipice of gangrene, like, you have to cut the limb off, dude. It's just how it is. Look at the way Germany is post-World War II. Even de-Stalinization has been more effective than America dealing with its own uh, history, its own gruesome and awful past. The Reconstruction era should have been a gigantic success, and yet it was a fucking failure. I haven't... Been watching the stream, but I saw a lot of people mad at you on Twitter, so I made you this to clear things up. <laughs> Thank you. Sorry, I should have said, look at the way the USSR dealt with Nazis in World War in the aftermath of World War II versus the way the West dealt with Nazis in the aftermath of World War II. Anyway. You say Putin is a bad guy as much as you want, not buying it. Oh no! Stop! Why are you showing this real footage of me? With my glorious Lord and Savior. Vladimir Putin. Fuck. Leaked. Same here, I try to own my miscalculations. I believe the chest puffing had peaked and was stabilizing. Not the case. Putin's speech today was another level of aggression. It doesn't matter when you admit that you're wrong, by the way. Like, I mean, there are some people. Um, there are some people that hopefully are like, yeah, I mean, because I said I was going to admit that I was wrong if Putin ended up fucking invading. Um, but, you know, you can't. There's just some people that just like absolutely fucking hate it. Yeah, people said he was a secret Muslim. And then a few years later, we elected that people president. So let's. These NATO generals had unusual backgrounds. They served in the Third Reich. <laughs> what an unusual background. Prove you're maybe pro-Russia after all. What? The fuck is this? Let's just agree to disagree on that one, shall we? That first meeting was in Loudoun County, Virginia, and it got so out of hand Worse. that the meeting was shut down early, and one guy passionately railing against CRT was arrested for trespassing, only to pop up on Tucker Carlson the very next day. So clearly, a lot of people are getting very mad about critical race theory right now, and instinctively, you probably know it's a manufactured panic. But the fact is, the fear around it is having real effects. Last year, Glenn Youngkin won the governor's race in Virginia after repeatedly promising that on his first day in office, he'd ban CRT from being taught in schools. Multiple states have passed laws outlawing the teaching of it, and Republicans are likely to make it a major focus of the midterms. When it comes to critical race theory, think of it like Rihanna's pregnancy. <laughs> Even if you think it has nothing to do with you, believe me, you're going to be hearing a lot about it this year. <laughs> So given that, we thought tonight we'd take a step back and look at what critical race theory is and isn't. Why the panic around... Oh, it's... Uh, someone translated the Zelensky uh, video, I guess. Right? Wait, waiting for event to begin? What the fuck? The event end already? What the fuck? 
Why am I fucking trending again, dude? Oh my lord. Oh my lord. Uh, I don't care about Ukrainian constitution. I don't care about the Ukrainian sovereignty. Hassan Piker, largest online leftist in the world, circa February 21st, 2022. Trending 30k tweets. Dude. It's wild. It's like, it, it's wild how much uh, fucking uh, people who are excited. I sincerely hope Hassan Piker gets drafted. Wait, why? Why me? I'm against the fucking war, dickhead. What the fuck? Why do I get drafted? People will just really be out here saying whatever, dude. Hassan's fans after defending him. He could have sat back and kept on making big money watching other people's stuff. Instead, he ran cover for Vladimir Putin by twisting himself to a pretzel. Dude, go keep destroying the fucking environment by being an oil lobbyist, you fucking stupid fuck. Oh, my Lord, dude. Oh, my Lord. Dude, why don't you keep fucking, like, why don't you keep destroying natural uh, water supplies? Please, just go back to being actually a fucking villain. Also, even in the video... Like, he's trying to say, oh, I'm defending Vl uh, Vladimir Putin. And the video itself t is titled, Vladimir Putin is bad. At the very least, like, you have to be like, well, there's some conflicting signals here. Bastiat, 5-2, uh, plus 3 hair. I mean, I did not know he was 5-2, but he does have 5-2 energy. So, yes, I'm, I'm fucking... Uh, he is not a short king, okay? That is some real manlit energy right there. Fucker, where's the suit on stream? He's also a landlord in his bio. America. Corporate attorney in America's natural gas industry, landlord, argue for liberty, trade, immigration, and constitution. Gross. So fucking gross, dude. And it has spread and what the consequences might be for everyone involved. And I realize some of you may already know what CRT is. After all, explainers on it have become one of the most common sites on the internet, along with mediocre Wordle scores and <laughs> ugly monkey JPEGs sold by and for dipshits. But... <laughs> But many are still very confused. Some random immediately tweeted that you're wondering why you're trending as an own. Like, damn, why are you hate watching so hard? I don't think people understand. Like, dude, you're literally giving me money. When you're hate watching, I mean, you can fucking clip. You can do this shit. But for every fucking dumbass uh, that uh, hates me more, when you fucking clip that shit, like, you have 10 people coming in here and, you know, getting fed with ads. Bossy is a Hutch D guy. Just ignore him. Yeah, I don't fucking. Twitter is dead. Um, like you're just, you're allowing me to become more popular. It's kind of weird. I thank you for doing a play by play of my stream. <laughs> At least you admit you're wrong. It's just irresponsible to claim Russia is not going to invade Ukraine without anyone having the full information. Okay. But the state department was like regularly wrong leading up to this moment. And they're still, we're still waiting on, you know, Russia to invade Kiev and bomb it, like motherfuckers are saying in the American media. I found you through a hate watcher. I'm sure there's plenty of people that have found me through hate watchers. Listen, pedophiles are signaling to one another with a globe emoji on Twitter. Be, be watchful. Be, be on the lookout for those who use the globe emoji on Twitter. These are the way pedophiles let other pedophiles know that they love doing pedophilia. Okay? Watch out. A recent survey found that an overwhelming majority of U.S. residents have a hard time articulating exactly what CRT is. And that even goes for some of those who've been yelling about it the loudest. I, I've never figured out what a critical race theory is, to be totally honest, after a year of talking about it. They're teaching that some races are morally <laughs> superior to others, that some are inherently sinful and some are inherently saintly, and that's immoral to teach that because it's wrong. Wow. I don't know if I've ever seen a person confidently complain about something just seconds after admitting they don't know shit about it. <laughs> no, I've never figured out how a car engine works, to be honest, but there's a chimpanzee... I mean, the low-key of the troops who place the invade. 
Bro, they already fucking said that they're literally invading. Like, they said that they're going to invade uh, territories that they uh, already have separatist forces in. Okay, that's an invasion. Like, it's still not an invasion. It's not an invasion in the way that the American media presented it, in the sense that they're going to, like, fucking fly planes over Kiev and bomb it and whatever the fuck. So if Russia invades Kiev, you'll admit that you were wrong about the topic and provide actual info? I mean, I have been providing actual info. And I'm still providing actual info. I still don't believe that they'll invade the entirety of Ukraine. That's insane. It's so fucking insane. But who knows? Maybe they will. Okay. Z under the hood turning a crank. And when you press the accelerator, it pokes him with a sharp stick and makes him crank faster. And it's immoral to do that because it's wrong. <laughs> but obviously... That is not what critical race theory is. It's the name given to a body of legal scholarship that began in the 1970s that attempted to understand why racism and inequality persisted after the civil rights movement. The core idea is that racism is not merely the product of individual bias or prejudice, but also something that is embedded in legal systems and policies. As for Tucker's notion that it teaches that some races are superior to others, or that parents claim that it teaches kids to hate America, None of that is remotely true, as Kimberly Crenshaw, one of CRT's leading scholars, points out. Critical race theory just says, let's pay attention to what has happened in this country and how what has happened in this country is continuing to create differential outcomes so we can become that country that we say we are. So critical race theory is not anti-patriotic. In fact, it is more patriotic than those who are opposed to it because we believe in the 13th and the 14th and the 15th Amendment. We believe in... Do you think that it might be feasible to create a buffer state between Ukraine and Russia from the separatist controlled zones rather than just being annexed to Russia? No, motherfucker. I think it's more feasible to neutralize Ukraine and allow... Uh, I mean, I don't know what the qualifiers would be for uh, the territories controlled by the Russian separatists, but I, I think that the appropriate thing to do in this situation is... Not to like split Ukraine into two, but instead just, you know, um, get concessions that Ukraine, Ukraine is not going to join NATO and give concessions that you're not going to fucking invade uh, Donetsk and Luhansk and all that shit. The promises of equality. And we know we can't get there if we can't confront and talk honestly about inequality. Yeah, she's right. And incidentally, if you've just found yourself there wondering what the 13th, 14th and 15th Amendments are, that alone might be a good sign that we don't talk about this stuff in schools enough. And to be clear, CRT is graduate level legal theory. So unless your five-year-old is currently pursuing a law degree, they're not reading Kimberly Crenshaw. But critics of it argue that the ideas behind CRT are being taught in schools and often present a hyperbolically distorted version of what those ideas are. And a key person here is this man, a conservative activist named Christopher Rufo. He claims CRT is... Yeah, this is good. I mean, this is, like, pretty, pretty comprehensive. ...actually a revolutionary program that would overturn the principles of the Declaration and destroy the remaining structure of the Constitution, which it just isn't. Why should Ukraine make those concessions? That's what fucking countries do, okay? That's what countries do. That's just how it works. You would never, ever in a million years allow China to encircle the United States by building fucking slowly and steadily building military-based countries around the United States. We have already done that for Russia. We did that during uh, the Cold War against the USSR, and we consistently did that we consistently fucking did that uh, to this day. But it's not. That's literally misinformation. This is not misinformation. That is not misinformation at all. Mike Flame GT is correct. What Russia is doing, or what Russia is going to end up doing, is the same shit that they did in Georgia. Where they'll say, hey, we have troops uh, uh, ready to fucking go. We're going to build military bases in, uh, in, in uh, the Donbass region, okay? 
we now recognize these two uh, territories, these two areas as uh, Russia, or not Russian, but independent uh, regions, okay? Which means we can protect the Russians there. So is NATO just a cover-up for us to have American bases tactically all around the world? NATO is just one of the many different ways that America flexes its global hegemonic power. If you understand that the American... Okay. If you understand that the American government's uh, imperialist attempts to have military bases all around the world is basically a fucking uh, uh, a, a protection racket, similar to the mafia, then you understand that NATO is just simply a continuation of said protection racket. Okay. And you can turn to the fucking shopkeeper and say, hey, well, you know, there are, look, the shopkeeper wanted to, the mafia to come and, and uh, do the protection racket. Like, come on. And there are very real fears outside that is not the mafia itself that the shopkeeper worries about. So the shopkeeper says, okay, I'll just fucking deal with uh, the mafia. Okay. They're my loan sharks anyway. So I'll just deal with the mafia instead because there are other mafias out there that I'm worried about or there are other people out there that I'm fucking worried about and they can take care of business for me but that still doesn't change the reality that it's a protection racket okay so you keep pointing to uh you keep pointing to the fucking the, the shopkeeper being like yeah I'm scared shitless uh I would rather have the mafia protect me than uh you know even though if I don't have the mafia protecting me then you know bad shit might happen as a consequence of the mafia or the other people that are also uh threatening the shop and then continuously defend the protection racket itself because that's all this is it isn't that <laughs> but in the wake of the george floyd protests just as america was beginning to grapple with systemic racism fox news began featuring rufo on air a lot as part of their efforts to swing that pendulum back hard and in one appearance he pointed to diversity trainings in government as evidence of CRT's influence. And he spoke directly to President Trump through the camera about what he wanted to see happen. The president and the White House, it's within their authority and power to immediately issue an executive order abolishing critical race theory trainings from the federal government. And I call on the president uh, to immediately issue this executive order and, and stamp out this destruction. How are countries not poised to join NATO when shit like this happens? Isn't this just building a case for NATO to still be around? No, I, I agree. I think Vladimir Putin fucking going into... Um, Vladimir Putin uh, saying he's going to fucking send troops into, uh, uh, into the Donbass region is the reason why countries are also looking forward to getting buku bucks from uh, joining NATO divisive pseudo but we gotta stop we gotta stop you guys are being selfish as fuck you literally are being selfish as fuck i've covered this for like six hours man please can we just can we be done with this for now okay if there's new information coming out we'll cover it but you're basically fucking asking me to repeat myself for the past two months now every single day that's the reason why we ban people now because every single fucking day man you guys Ask me over and over and over again that like, uh, and, and now it's moved on from like, it, it just asking the same fucking shit. They just straight up being like, you're wrong, you're wrong, you're wrong. Like you motherfuckers are like excited that Ukraine is going to be fucking leveled if it does actually happen. You know what I mean? You're like, you're like excited. Oh, sick, dude. Ukraine's going to be leveled, but hey, guess what? Ultimately, uh, you know, you were wrong. Every day for the last month has been Russia and Canada truckers. Yeah, please stop. In scientific ideology at its root. Now, did Trump see that? I don't know. Is the Pope a Catholic? Is the reason Big died the fact that Carrie didn't call 911 fast enough? The answer to all those questions is yes, and also, she was right not to do it. No big loss. Because Mark Meadows, Trump's chief of staff, has since revealed President Trump saw that interview, and when Rufo said, I call on the president to immediately issue this executive order, quote, that's what we did. Which is weird. There should be more steps than that. It shouldn't just go, one, yell your wish at the president, then two, 
it happens. <laughs> Ideally, you want an executive branch that's a little more complicated than fucking Siri. And with that, CRT, or crucially, Rufo's definition of it, was suddenly absolutely everywhere. Fox News kept pushing it, mentioning the term critical race theory nearly 5,000 times last year alone. And the network zeroed in on its supposed use in schools, with Rufo telling Fox's audience that CRT has really become the default ideology of the public education system. And what... I hate that this, like, fucking dickhead got so much clout off of this. Like, I just, I, I do hate it. Elden Ring Gaming will save us? Absolutely. Rufo has been cleverly doing is cherry-picking the worst examples that he can find of lessons in classrooms or training materials for teachers and saying, that is CRT. And he's oh, I gotta pee. I'll be back. that he's been engaged in a deliberate rebranding exercise, tweeting, we have successfully frozen their brand, critical race theory, into the public conversation and are steadily driving up negative perceptions. The goal is to have the public read something crazy in the newspaper and immediately think critical race theory. And the thing is, it fucking worked. Because whenever you hear CRT now, you are not hearing about the academic discipline. You're hearing about a category so broad, it encompasses both the craziest thing in the newspaper and also, crucially, any conversation about race that someone does not want to have. And look, I am not saying discussing race in a classroom is easy or even always done well. Experts in this field will readily admit that. Now, have you seen bad implementations of this? Of course. Right? That's like asking, have I seen a bad math lesson? <laughs> right? Like, yes, teachers are humans, especially as we're trying to figure out how to teach about race and racism. Exactly. Teachers are human and can make mistakes. Frankly, I'm surprised they don't make more. They wake up insanely early and spend all day getting low-key roasted by teenagers for an amount of money best described as completely harrowing. The very fact any student in America knows what a covalent bond is is a fucking miracle, and every adult involved deserves the Congressional Medal of Honor. And the fact is, you can find examples of clumsy, shitty lessons. One school used a privilege bingo card, which sure seems like a glib way to handle a very serious subject. Another classic lesson over the years has been to teach about prejudice metaphorically by dividing a classroom up by eye colour, with brown-eyed people, for instance, being the lowest tier and then being treated terribly. And if you do that in a diverse classroom and think for even a second about who is more likely to have brown eyes, you can probably immediately see just how badly that lesson could go. That actually happened in at least one school in the Chicago area. And the reason I know that is that this kid was in the class that day and she's one of our writers now. Ali, what did you think of that lesson? It was pretty fucked up. Yeah. Yeah, I bet it was. But the fact is... Many educators are working very hard to find age-appropriate ways to talk about race and racism in the classroom. And if you do it right, you don't stop at the civil rights movement. You tell the story all the way to the present day, which kids want and need. They have questions about what they can see with their own eyes, and they deserve good answers. And it is, frankly, far better for them to have these discussions in a supportive, educational environment. Like the U.S. putting people in Cuba to start a revolution that would create a more welcoming U.S.-friendly government. I know you know this best, so why would it be like... Okay, uh, once again, 28-month subscriber. You're taking a week off. We have already fucking, uh... We already moved on from this. You're being incredibly selfish. Uh, we've moved on from the subject. Unless there's new information, uh, we're done rather than the potential alternative during a screaming match at Thanksgiving. But the panic over CRT threatens to shut those conversations down. And that is not all it is likely to do. Because some pushing this panic the hardest are actually using it to advance a much bigger agenda that they've wanted for a very long time. And that is school choice. Basically, letting parents take tax dollars afforded to the public schooling of their kid and use them at any school they like. Here is Chris Rufo again laying out that exact strategy. First, uh, we have to just get it out of schools. We have to ban it and abolish it. 
Uh, but in the long term, what we need to do is give every parent in this country a right to exit failing institutions. No child should be trapped in a failing public school that violates uh, his sense of conscience, that violates the values of the parents. Every parent should take those education dollars anywhere that they wish. Right. School choice will liberate people, it will empower people, and it will actually depolarize some of these national fights that we've seen. Oh, so you're doing all of this to tone down partisan fights, are you, Chris? Very cool of you. You've probably noticed that general wave of calm, chill vibes sweeping the nation lately. <laughs> if there is one word I would use to describe every image coming out of a school board meeting these days, it is depolarized. <laughs> Look, it is not just Rufo. Conservative organisations that have long pushed for school choice, like the Heritage Foundation and Freedom Works, have poured money into this fight. And of course, no school choice push would be complete without lifelong rich person and occasional education secretary Betsy DeVos, who wrote an op ed titled Let's Liberate Kids from Race Indoctrination with School Choice. And you should know this is just nothing new. There is a long history of responding to racial panic with a push for school choice. In fact, the roots of the school choice movement trace back to the Brown versus Board of Education decision when southern states adopted voucher programs to facilitate the creation of private schools called segregation academies. And some of those taking advantage of school choice today sure seem to be doing some heavy indoctrination of their own. Take Florida. It is one of the states that allows public money to go to voucher schools. And a few years back, an investigation into some of them found commonly used textbooks that downplayed the horrors of slavery. One of them is this one, America, Land I Love, which has all the kind of bullshit that you would expect that the Civil War was fought for states' rights. But it also states that during the antebellum period, the slave who knew Christ had more freedom than a free person who did not know the savior. Dude, that's like good shit, dude. That's the good shit that we should... You know, this, this British man, what the fuck does he know? Okay? It seems like... seems like we were better off when America was learning about that instead. You know, we lost Christ. Which is not just offensive, it is profoundly stupid. Any kid reading that absolute trombone slide of a sentence... <laughs> would instantly drop two full grades. It sounds less like something you'd find in a textbook and more like something you'd find crocheted on a throw pillow in Paula Dean's living room. <laughs> so, if you want to talk about racial indoctrination of school kids, this might be a better place to start. But the thing is, even a manufactured panic is a panic. Those parents at school board meetings are genuinely angry, and as any little league coach knows, once you reach a critical mass of angry white parents, there will be consequences. In Texas, this high school principal was forced out of his job after being accused at a school board meeting of promoting CRT by someone who wasn't even a parent at his school. And in Tennessee, this current affairs team... Fuck yeah. That's my favorite. And then they'll be like, well, our tax dollars are paying for this school, so we should dictate what the fuck happens here. And I was just about to say, it's like the same energy as going to the fucking hospital and being like, uh, technically our tax dollars have also, uh, helped with the building of this hospital. So I should be able to tell you how to do a surgery on someone else. Okay. Except, oh wait, they do that as well. They literally would fucking go in and be like, you need to give ivermectin to this dying patient. And, and try to pull the fucking dying patients out. The entitlement is fucking crazy, dude. It's just crazy, okay? Just like the unsubscribed chatters being entitled to thinking that they won't see an ad at the top of the hour when an ad break comes, okay? Like, dude, I'm sorry. I'm sorry how much... Same energy is complaining about how you run your broadcast, but not even being a subscriber. Exactly. And then saying, like, you can't fucking, you know, I don't want to see ads. What the fuck? Like, bro, you're going to see ads, bro. That's just, you're going to see ads. Unless you subscribe for $5 or for free with the Twitch Prime. Or, or by getting gifted a sub if you're fucking lucky. Okay? You're a good boy or a good girl or a good MB. All right? Here's the one-minute ad break now. 
teacher, was fired for not giving varying points of view after he gave students a Tanahasi Coates article and showed them Kyla Janae Lacey's poem, White Privilege. And he actually had a pretty decent response to that criticism. I think, to me, it, it, the varying viewpoint is Kyla Janae Lacey and is Tanahasi Coates. Those are perspectives that my students aren't exposed to on a daily basis because, you know, we live in that white, dominant, evangelical environment. Right. When you live in a mostly white environment, the voices of black people can be the varying point of view. And not just on current events, either on lots of things that white people might otherwise assume, even trivial ones, like it's okay to go out in a blizzard in shorts, and <laughs> if I argue with this cop, I can probably get out of a ticket, and time travel would be a fun and stress-free activity. Ooh, the 1930s, I can't wait to look around. <laughs> Unfortunately, though, those situations are now only likely to become more common. Since January of last year, 37 states have introduced bills or taken other steps that would restrict teaching critical race theory or limit how teachers can discuss racism. And the justification for this... Funny how that works. Patty Pagan, thank you for the five get the subs. Uh, funny how that works, ain't it? It's just, uh, you know... They're like, cancel culture, cancel culture. The liberals hate. The liberals absolutely fucking hate free speech. They hate it. And then they fucking turn around and, and they're like, oh yeah, also we need to stop, stop educating kids on racism. These has often been more than a little flimsy. Here is one Tennessee lawmaker explaining why he was pushing for his state's bill. Listen to the following quotes from an email forwarded to me concerning a seven-year-old girl in Williamson County. The little girl told her mother, I'm ashamed that I'm white. The daughter then asked her mother, is there something wrong with me? Why am I hated so much? Okay, I, I hear that, I, I really do. But the thing to do in that situation isn't to pass a law limiting the discussion of race in the classroom, it's to ask literally one follow-up question, like, what was happening to make you think the other kids hate you? Or uh, did any adults step in when you felt this way? Or do you even exist? <laughs> because you should know, when reporters looked into this, they found no parent had come forward to that school's principal, teachers, or district officials with that complaint, and administrators there weren't able to pinpoint any student who might be upset or lessons that could have been upsetting. And if that is how we are arguing things now, I should probably mention that I, too, just so happen to have an email forward from a different little white girl. Way cuter than the first one, by the way, who said that that first girl story is complete bullshit. And the thing is, by Tennessee law, it seems I simply have to believe. Okay, this is literally a, an ongoing bit on this stream. Whenever people, whenever people say, like, uh, you know, run the ad, I think so. Yeah, I think I did. Um... Whenever people say like, oh, a buddy of mine, and I, I, what do I always tell you? Just own them by saying, well, I know two, two guys, okay? And the two guys I know, they're fucking way cooler than the guy you know, okay? <laughs> but that, that lawmaker actually illustrates the problem facing legislators currently trying to outlaw something that they cannot define. Because what are you then going to do? Pass a law saying kids can't feel bad? Well, it turns out, yes because that is exactly what Tennessee did. They passed a law prohibiting any teaching that would cause discomfort, guilt, anguish, or distress solely because of the individual's race or sex, which is very broad. And you know what? You're not going to believe this, but I just received another email this second <laughs> from a third Tennessee white girl who, who says, what fucking idiots are writing these laws? And how many fictitious children are they going to make up to justify them? P.S. I honestly preferred the new Zazu. And wow, what a nice thing to say from a definitely real child. And look, the thing is, we have talked before on this show about the multiple problems with teaching kids a sanitized version of US history and how, as far back as a century ago, groups like the United Daughters of the Confederacy were reshaping textbooks to downplay its horrors. And it seems... Here we go again, I guess. Because lawmakers are trying to micromanage school curriculums, sometimes pretty ineptly. A bill proposed in Virginia contains a section listing some of the founding documents that is OK to teach, a list that includes the Declaration of Independence, the Constitution, and the first debate between Abraham Lincoln and Frederick Douglass, which, I hope you know, is not a thing that happened. <laughs> 
The Lincoln-Douglas debates were, of course, between Senator Stephen Douglas and his opponent, a 2020 Lincoln Navigator. So, <laughs> read your history, everyone. Facts matter here. But maybe the most insulting distortion of history is in the quote that every single anti-CRT activist seems to love to invoke. You think about what MLK uh, stood for. He said he didn't want people judged on the color of their skin, but on the color... This is the fucking worst shit, dude. Like, it's so gross when these racist pieces of shit... One million percent will be like, MLK is bad, he's trying to, he's a commie, and, and uh, you know, uh, and he has numerous, like, he, he wants to have sex with many women and, like, cheat on his wife or whatever. Like, those are the same fucking guys that are now like, oh, MLK would have agreed with me. Uh, no, I, I don't think he would have. Okay? MLK is a communist who wants to destroy America, and then, you know, now you're like, yeah, he's, he totally would agree with me content of their character you know I, I believe it was martin luther king that said you know when he was talking about his children that he didn't want his children to be judged on the color of their skin but by the content of their character content of their character not by the color of their skin content of our character not the color of our skin and the immortal words of dr martin luther king ring in our ears that mm. we must judge others not by the color of their skin but by the content of their character the left wants us to constantly focus on skin color it's destructive Martin Luther King Jr. is rolling over in his grave. Yeah, you know what? I bet he is, actually. In fact, I'm pretty sure every time someone uses his words that way, Dr. King's illustrious remains spin fast enough to power the eastern fucking seaboard. <laughs> Here is the thing, though. That dream speech was clearly an aspirational goal, not a description of things as they stood. And, in fact, King himself later put a pretty major asterisk on it. I must confess that, uh... That dream that I had that day has, at many points, turned into a nightmare. And I've come to see that uh, we have uh, many more difficult days ahead, and some of the old optimism was a little superficial, and now it must be tempered with a solid realism. Yeah, exactly. And in a book published that same year, he wrote that while the majority of white Americans consider themselves sincerely committed to justice for the Negro and they believe that American society is essentially hospitable to fair play and to steady growth toward a middle-class utopia embodying racial harmony, unfortunately, this is a fantasy of self-deception and comfortable vanity. So, while it is clearly very appealing to create a version of history where MLK was a kind figure who existed solely to help white people win arguments, <laughs> The truth is, he later reflected on his own message and challenged white people to look more deeply at themselves. And that is something the kids should absolutely be learning about in school. But the problem is, they won't if these laws continue. A white parent could plausibly claim that reading MLK's writing made their child feel discomfort on the basis of their race. And some of these laws seem designed to bend schools' curriculums to the sensibilities of the most conservative, alarmed parents. In Florida, Ron DeSantis is pushing a Stop Woke Act. That was him unveiling it just a minute ago, with Chris Rufo, by the way, right behind him. And that would give parents private right of action to sue... <laughs> MLK backtracking? I wonder how some chatters in here would feel about that. Yes. In the mind of the online debate, bro, the debate lord, you can never, you can never change your position once faced with new information, Okay. The bait bro does not operate on said boundaries. That means he's backtracking. That means he's lost plus uh, L plus ratio. Okay. Mm, you're backtracking. You're backtracking owned. Are you having a headache? I, I am having a little bit of a headache. I'm just, I'm really tired. If they think their kids are being taught CRT and all of these laws are already having chilling effects Book bans are on the rise around the country and one Oklahoma school district has even told teachers simply to avoid using terms like Diversity and white privilege and look here's the thing you can ban all the books you want You can try and legislate it away, but as any black woman on the bachelor can tell you Talking about race is unavoidable. And it is not just unavoidable, it's essential, especially in the places where people are most panicked about CRT. And this actually brings us all the way back to where this story began in Loudoun County, Virginia, where that school board meeting got so very far out of hand. Here is one of the leaders of the anti-CRT push there, explaining just why she is so fiercely opposed to it being taught. 
In Loudoun County, this is the wealthiest county in the country. There's not a lot of racism. <laughs> there are... <laughs> That's a good one. Yeah, no, totally, dude. There's not. There's never. Silly people that say stupid things. But if you talk about it less, you're going to notice that division less. I don't look at the person based on their skin color. I look at them based on their character. OK, so there's a lot of obvious red flags there, from confidently asserting there's not a lot of racism here to the I don't see skin color to the you won't notice division so much if you just don't talk about it. And hey, <laughs> if the problem with racism in America was only it's bumming Patty Menders out, then yeah, shutting up about it would probably solve the whole issue. But guess how long it takes for that conversation to take a real turn. I think there are a lot of there, there are probably plenty of people that would agree with exactly that. But just to be fair on the other side, there are people, especially young black men, for example, who would say, I would love to not be judged on the color of my skin. Do you think it's more on the color of their skin or their actions? How they're dressed? That's awesome. She just straight up was like, I'm not racist. I don't ski. I don't ski. I don't see skin color. Just kidding. I'm racist as fuck, dude. I'm like incredibly racist, dude. The most. I was just kidding about that not racist thing. Just the most racist. I'm the greatest to ever do it. How they perceive, how they respect others. If you have a kid that's pulled over by a cop, does it really matter what color they are? Or is, is it the respect that yes. they give to that? Police no, it, it does. It does matter. Yes, that's wow. Wow. When you respond to someone mentioning young black men would like to be treated better by automatically envisioning them dressed terribly and acting disrespectfully while being arrested by the police, you are telling on yourself, Patty. You are snitching on your very soul. And as for her claim there that there is not a lot of racism in Loudoun County, you probably already assumed that that was bullshit, but you should know. An assessment of public school. I love that when it was like, hey, listen, there's no black people here. There's, there's no racism here. You know, because we purged all the black people from the county like a long time ago. Was there found that it was shocking the extent to which students report the use of the n-word and i think as a society we have now agreed white people should not be using the n-word a shocking number of times unless that is they have a lucrative podcast deal with spotify but that is absolutely <laughs> it. okay dude. And all of this brings us to the main point here that for all the laws being passed to that was the best joke of the entire fucking show today this show today discomfort or anguish on account of an individual's race whose discomfort exactly are we prioritizing here because kids of color can tell you they don't get a choice to not talk about race and have it go away